Okay, so exponential functions are really any function of the form f of x or y equals a to the x. Now, the most common ones that we deal with, um, probably 2 to the x, 10 to the x, and, of course, e to the x. Now, e is actually a number. e is equal to 2.71. Continue. Um, so it's a number between 2 and 3. So its properties and its behaviour um, is exactly the same as 2 to the x and 10 to the x. But often e to the x pops up quite a big for us. It's called Euler's number. All right, so if we have a look, the exponential functions are defined over the real numbers. Okay, so the, the domain is r and um, our range all right, is typically for the standard function r plus. So it never equals the x and never touches the x-axis. So our range is um, r plus and the general shape is as you see below. Okay, so if you have a look at the difference between, say, 2 to the x and 10 to the x, the only difference is the 10 to the x graph is gets steeper a lot more quickly, all right? Which makes sense. 2 squared is 4, 10 squared is 100. 2 cubed is 8, 10 cubed is 1,000. So 10 to the x gets big very quickly. And in fact, most exponential graphs do get, pick, get big very quickly. Uh, key features here that we should be aware of, um, they both, they all cross the axis at 0, 1. So my y-intercept, because any number to the power of 0 is always 1. So the y-intercept is always 1. Um, there's a horizontal asymptote at y equal to 0. The domain is r, the range is r plus. Okay, they're increasing functions, etc. All right, so if we just want to do some basic graph sketching, it's just following and using uh, the same properties that we've always used for all our other graphs. So 2 to the x plus 1. The x plus 1 there is going to shift my graph to the left one unit, and the plus 2 is going to move it up two units. So first things first, let's put an asymptote in place. So instead of it being at y equal to 0, it's going to be at y equal to 2. Just to confirm, if I put x equal to 0, y is equal to 2 to the 1 plus 2. Um, so it's shifted up and to the right. So we're going to have an intercept at 4. So my normal, if you think about where my normal y-intercept would be, my normal y-intercept would be there at 3. It's being moved back to the left one unit because of the translation here. So my graph coordinate is 0, 4, and that's what my um, general graph looks like. The domain of the graph, well, let's just equal to R, the range, since we've moved up two units, is going to be, oh, round bracket, from 2 to infinity, got there eventually, okay? So let's have a look at graph number two, or example number two. Okay, again, what are the key shifts? X to the minus one shifts it all one unit to the right. Positive two brings it up two. The negative sign is a reflection, okay, about the x-axis. So let's think about what our standard graph would look like. So if I wanted to do a minus 3 to the x, instead of being that way, it's going to go that way. And then we're going to do our shifting, aren't we? We're going to move the whole thing up and we're going to move the whole thing to the right. So first things first, let's get an asymptote in. We said the whole graph is being moved up two units. y equal to 2. Let's find an x-intercept. So x-intercept, we put y equal to 0. I get 0 is equal to 2 minus 3 to the x minus 1. So negative 2 equals negative 3 to the x minus 1. Make them both positive. Now, if you remember our log laws, we either use our CAS or 
put this the base, so that's the same as saying log base 3 of 2 equals x minus 1. Take the 1 across, x is equal to 1 plus log base 3 of 2. Now that process there is something we'll spend more time on later on. Some of you will recall it from year 11 and in fact year 10. So that's how we solve for x as an exact value. Otherwise we'll use our, our CAS and get an approximate. Find our x-intercepts, we put y equal to zero. So to get our y-intercept, we'll put x equal to zero. So that means we'll get uh, y is equal to two minus three to the zero minus one, two minus three to the minus one, which is two minus one third, which is five thirds. So y-intercept at the point zero five thirds, and the x-intercept at the point, 1 plus log base 3 of 2. So then if we sketch that graph, we know from just our little reflection stuff, our graph has got that sort of shape. So we approach the asymptote, and then we're going to go down through our intercepts. So the domain, again, the domain is going to be equal to R. And the range is equal to, what's my maximum? It's 2, so it's negative infinity all the way up to positive 2. All right, round brackets because it's not inclusive. 